Hello, I'm Sheldon Axler, the author of Linear Algebra Done Right. This video discusses part two of the section of the book titled Operators on Real Inner Product Spaces. In this video, we focus our attention on isometries on real inner product spaces. Recall from the previous video that we are letting V denote a finite dimensional inner product space. Let's review the definition of isometry that we saw in a much earlier video. An operator S on our inner product space V is called an isometry if the norm of S of V is equal to the norm of V for every vector V. In other words, an operator is an isometry if it preserves norms. Let's also review a result from a previous video. Suppose S is an operator on V then the following three conditions are equivalent. First condition, S is an isometry. Second condition, S star S equals the identity operator. Third condition, S times S star is equal to the identity operator. Let's consider a consequence of this result. Suppose S is an isometry. Then by conditions two and three here, we see that S star S is equal to S S star because both are equal to the identity operator. Thus S commutes with this adjoint, which means that S is normal. In summary, we have shown that every isometry is a normal operator. Let's look at a family of examples of isometries on R2. Fix a real number theta then the operator on R2 of counterclockwise rotation by theta is an isometry. That's geometrically obvious because rotation does not change the norm of a vector. In the figure here, the one on the horizontal axis indicates that we are dealing with the unit circle in R2. As you can see, if we rotate the point 1, 0 by an angle of theta counterclockwise, we get the point cosine theta, sine theta. In fact, this is the definition of the cosine and the sine. The matrix of this rotation operator with respect to the standard basis of R2 is shown here. The first standard basis vector is the vector 1, 0, and you can see in the first column the coordinates of the rotation cosine theta, sine theta. If theta equals 0, we just have the identity operator. If theta equals pi, then we have a rotation of pi radians, or 180 degrees. That operator is the negative of the identity operator. However, if theta is not an integer multiple of pi, then clearly no non-zero vector of R2 gets mapped to a scalar multiple of itself. Thus, if theta is not an integer multiple of pi, the operator has no eigenvalues. In a previous video, we gave a complete description of isometries on a finite dimensional complex inner product space. Recall that description. If we have an isometry on a complex inner product space, then there's an orthonormal basis of that complex inner product space with respect to which the matrix of the isometry is a diagonal matrix and each entry on the diagonal is a complex number with absolute value 1. That description is not true on real inner product spaces, but now we can give a complete description of isometries on real inner product spaces. Here it is. Suppose V is a real inner product space and S is an operator on V. Then the following are equivalent. A, S is an isometry. Condition B, is that there is an orthonormal basis of V with respect to which S has a block diagonal matrix such that each block on the diagonal is a one by one matrix containing either one or negative one, or is a two by two matrix of the form shown here where theta is an angle in the interval from zero to pi. If you think about condition B, it says an isometry on a real inner product space gives the decomposition of the vector space as a direct sum of subspaces. And on each of those subspaces, the isometry is either multiplication by one, in other words, is just the identity, 
or is the negative of the identity, or is a rotation by some angle. Let's look at the proof that A implies B. Thus suppose that A holds, meaning that S is an isometry. In particular, S is a normal operator. And from a result in the previous video, we conclude that there's an orthonormal basis of V with respect to which S has a block diagonal matrix, such that each block is a one by one matrix or a two by two matrix of the form shown here. Let's think about this block diagonal matrix description of S. If we look at a block that happens to be a one by one matrix, then because S is an isometry, the entry in that block has to have absolute value one. There are only two real numbers with absolute value one, so we conclude that if lambda is an entry in a one by one matrix along the diagonal, then lambda is one or lambda is equal to negative one. Now let's look at one of the two by two matrices in our block diagonal matrix. This two by two matrix has the form shown above. Recall that S is an isometry. The first column of the matrix above contains the numbers A and B, with B positive. Because S is an isometry, we must have A squared plus B squared equals one. That implies that we can choose an angle theta in the interval from zero to pi such that a is equal to the cosine of theta and b is equal to the sine of theta. Thus, our block diagonal matrix has the required form. We have proved that condition a implies condition b. Even though this proof fit on one slide, it used some powerful results. In particular, we use the description of normal operators on a real inner product space, which went back to the spectral theorem ultimately. The proof that B implies A is much less steep. Please try to do it yourself, or look at the proof in the book. Because this video included a discussion of rotations in the Euclidean plane R2, let's finish with this famous painting of Euclid explaining geometry. This is part of a painting called The School of Athens that was painted by Raphael around 1510. The painting is currently located in the Vatican. This concludes part two of the video on operators on real inner product spaces. If you see a small picture of a slide in the upper left corner of this slide, then you can click on it to get to the next video. If you see a small picture of part of the cover of linear algebra done right in the upper right corner of this slide, then you can click on it to get to the book's website.